Welcome to Empower to Grow, the podcast. I am your host, Hanan Al Basha, the business doctor. Following our conversations with empowered women who woke up one day and consciously claimed, I am more than enough, I am worthy, I am empowered to grow. And along their empowering journey towards realizing their own potential and their quest for growth, they became a beacon of hope and guidance for others. May you also find your inner power to grow. Hello again, everyone. Welcome to a new episode of Empower to Grow. This is your host, Hanan al Basha. And tonight I have a very special and dear friend of mine, Diala Dawood. Hi. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Thank you for having me, Hannah and Anja. I'm really happy to be here and all excited for this talk. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Diala is founder of Launch DXB, and she's a very active participant of multiple entrepreneurial ecosystems across the Middle East and North Africa region. And I find her as a very aspirational and inspirational young lady compared to me. Young lady. So that's why I'm like super excited to have her here. Diala, I, I want to start with Empower to Grow. That's the name of the podcast, and it's definitely part of my belief system, my personal belief system. What does the phrase Empower to Grow mean to you, or how does it resonate with you? So, frankly, thank you for actually choosing this title in specific for your podcast. I believe we all should be reminded on the go that, yes, we are actually empowered, and we can grow if we take the initiative ourselves and we actually try to make a difference in our lives or in the lives of those around us. So uh, empowered to grow for me personally, the, the moment you said it, I just remembered my family, my, my culture, my society that really helped me become and mold me into the person I am today, who doesn't take no for, a, for an answer and who tries multiple approaches to get things done the way she wants and she really aspires to grow day and night just to evolve in any way I can on a personal and professional level I love that I love that and as you said I'm also a huge believer in the fact that we do have the choice to grow I think it needs a lot of kind of let's say um, consciousness and attention and work to be able to kind of go across and, and go into and become who we're meant to be so from that perspective, you are actually, as you said, empowered to grow and you also empower others to grow. Tell us a bit more about your story and your background. Cool. So whenever I introduce myself to new to new people I get to actually uh, meet, I tell them that I entered the startup ecosystem by pure chance where I actually applied for a student job when I was pursuing my master's degree. From there, I started to work closely in the startup ecosystem in Lebanon, Jordan, Palestine, and Egypt. And I found that I really got in love with this overall space, how vibrant it was, how lively it was, how innovative it was, the amount and the number of people you get to meet, the amount of ideas you hear about. So from there, I actually decided to, to by choice, to remain in this ecosystem and to grow in it. I took on multiple roles in different uh, local, regional, and global um, enablers. I supported them across the boards, wearing multiple hats from business development to events management, running programs and accelerators, um, to hosting events and activations, among my, many other stuff. Until today, where I actually stand as a consultant supporting startups and expanding to the GCC region specifically to the UAE um, and Saudi, where I had earlier experiences before. I stand as the co-founder of Launch DXB and Partner, which is a platform I co-founded in Dubai, supporting startups and founders to get up and running with their own um, startups, just to know what are the resources available for them, trying, as you mentioned, to empower them to grow all together yeah. uh, and connecting them with the right resources they know for they need for the journey. And also today I'm consulting with um, Tesmo Accelerator, which yeah. is a leading smart city accelerator held by NCIT of Qatar and of, uh, operated by Elite of Qatar. And the program is uh, targeting smart city startups across the healthcare environment and logistics sectors. So this is me. I love that. I love that. And the, the point and what I loved about you from, from the first day we met, and I know we met through Founder Institute, which is also you were in Dubai then, and then you moved to Qatar and we got to meet in person, which was amazing, was that you were also, as you said, you were evolving on a daily basis. You're looking for new challenges and new opportunities to see where you can grow, but also where you can empower further. Exactly. Yep. 
Okay. Um, actually, like I believe all the ecosystems I worked with really taught me something or another about how to go around my own business uh, by myself and also how to see things from their own perspective, from mm -hmm. either the lack of resources available in these ecosystems or even the abundance of it, let's say. So you learn a lot from each of these and accordingly you start to really to develop your own thing, mode of thinking somehow of how to approach problems yourself, either consulting and supporting other startups or doing it in my business myself. That's exactly it. That's exactly it. Okay, so from where you stand today, what advice would you go back and impart on your 19 year old self? Was she the one that had started in the entrepreneurial <laughs> ecosystem or that was a bit later? <laughs> uh, no, I wasn't pursuing my master's degree. So it was okay. a little bit okay. later. So that was a bit later. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, I would tell her that uh, in Arabic, tashi, yani, just move forward. Forward. Really, don't stop, no matter what. Don't accept a no. Um, always ask. I always tell people that ask. You never know your question, literally, what doors it might open for you. So That's don't be hesitant to ask. Don't be afraid to ask. Just the touch it. Open the doors and move. Um, yeah, I love that. I love that. And, and and I think the part that you said that's really, really, really important is about asking. And you never like, you know, I had, um, I can't remember, it was part of a conversation and someone's like, you know, I'm going to ask a stupid question. I'm like, there aren't no stupid questions. Just ask, you know, exactly. you're going to get the answer. What, what you think, and you shouldn't be using that language with yourself because that's transformational vocabulary, but what you think might be quote unquote stupid is actually very useful. It's just some, someone else might not have had the courage to ask that question, but you exactly. can never have enough answers because then you're also getting a wealth of answers that you get to choose from because it's your life and it's your path and you need to walk down it especially with the with the overall changes happening in our world digital developments yeah. technologies trends there is no right answer because things are consistently moving and changing so even if the right answer or the right question was raised a week ago now probably doesn't stand out so literally just ask any questions because even if you ask me and you the same question someone asks us at the question yes. each one of us is going to reply back in a really different way and the entrepreneur or the founder herself doesn't know which one resembles or speaks to her more unless she asks both of us actually this question that's true so that's true. always ask literally love that okay so the other end of the spectrum now we're in a time capsule and we're going to the future and what do you want your 90 90 year old self oh, wow. to thank you for today what would you like her to say thank you for hmm. thank you for stepping out of your comfort zone it's good to be in your comfort zone to really find your space because no matter what an extrovert you are at the end of the day, you need to be by yourself to actually reclaim and re-energize or to gather your energy altogether. So mm. um, I really cherish my own comfort zone, but I also appreciate myself and just literally moving from one ecosystem to the other. Anytime I feel that a certain experience have reached its not finish line, I'd say, but it became more of redundant. I yeah. gathered from it as much information, as much experience as I could. I love that I always take an initiative to just find something new, more challenging, more intriguing altogether. So uh, but on my 90th birthday, I would be really proud that I took these steps and just jumped around the ecosystem, wearing as many hats as I, <laughs> as I did and experiencing or working closely with as many ecosystems as I did. I love that because, because as you said, I mean, once you get saturated in one place, then you're just going to be doing the same thing. It's kind of a groundhog day. You're exactly. repeating your days again and you're not growing anymore. And this is the challenging, the comfort zone is about growth. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Okay. So our last question is you're on a stage and you've been on stages. I know that, but you're on a stage this time. You're talking to tens of thousands of women. And the topic is about being empowered to grow. What would be that last message you leave them with? Last message? I believe that women set stereotypes about us. Um, really, we are the people who empower the stereotypes being made about us, about us being sensitive, uh, being incapable of driving successful businesses by ourselves, being controlled somehow by our own male counterparts of fathers, husbands, brothers, what have you. I believe, unfortunately, that we help feed these stereotypes and it is us that change these stereotypes. 
So mm. regardless which family you come from, which village you come from, which city you come from, you can always tell your own story and you can change anything that's told about you. Wow. So <laughs> you can change your narrative. Um, yes, I agree <laughs> 1000%. You do get the option. And I think, I, I love how you put it because as you said, it's it's about being in control of your own narrative and challenging the stereotype that you have been fed and conditioned with growing up exactly. because it's part of your subconscious but there has to be a point where you stop and say this is not me this is not my story how do I change it 100% and you, uh, you actually drive yourself to become more helpless somehow when you yeah. keep on blaming your externals your your culture your family whatever for everything that's happening with you you will not advance any step forward so unless you actually take the lead you will not be able to accomplish things that you wish you can accomplish yourself and if you look around, there are thousands of successful stories from women from the most probably uh, conservative cultures that were really able to cut through all this clutter, all these stereotypes, and to drive successful lives, regardless in which industries or uh, domains they are actually in. So yes. if this woman was able to do it, I believe thousands of other women and millions and billions of other women can actually do that as well. I love that. I love that. Okay. A lot of empowering talk there. <laughs> Diala, where can our listeners and our viewers find you in virtual space? Cool. I'm active everywhere. You'll find okay. my handles on, uh, I'm mostly active on LinkedIn. So if someone would like to even read some pieces of my mind, my thoughts on the ecosystem, some feedback I give, they can connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm more than happy to do that. I do have a mix of personal slash professional content on my Instagram account. So also feel free to reach out. And on Twitter, I'm just an active listener. I just love to listen to what's happening there. I reshare some thoughts, but I don't actively participate as much as I do on LinkedIn on other platforms uh, and my handle is the Woodyala with one D one common D one D okay and we're, we're going to be including <laughs> your your handles anyway in sure. our uh, notes Yala thank you so much um, it was short and sweet and so empowering on so many levels and that's why I love talking to you always same here <laughs> really thank you for having me with you <laughs> it's my pleasure so I think uh, Diala said it for us. It's kind of, you're in control of your own narrative. We understand we're not delusional that there are um, oppressing and suppressing situations where you cannot change possibly physical location. You can't take control of some of the things in your life, but your thoughts are yours and um, how you want your life to map out is definitely something you could work on because that is within your control. So as always, wish you love, abundance and prosperity. And we're going to see you next time. Bye for now. Thank you for listening to the Empowered to Grow podcast. For further engagement with a tribe of empowered women, join my Facebook group, Empowered to Grow, or visit my website, www.hananelbasha.com. I'll catch you on the next episode. And until then, know that empowered you empowers others. Love, abundance, and prosperity to you all.